Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Eochon Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Tuesday, November 8th, 2022, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Brighter than the message declared by angels was valid, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard him. While God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit, distributed um, according to his own will. For it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou carest for him? Thou didst make for him a little while lower than the angels, and thou hast crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing so many sons to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through suffering. Today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 16 through 21. The Lord said to his disciples, He who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In the same hour, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to babes. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. Today in the Orthodox Church, we remember the synaxis of the Holy Archangels. Now that they have different names, well, let me read a couple of them to you. Of course, there's Michael. We know Michael very well from the scriptures. You know Gabriel also, Raphael and Uriel. There's also Salafiel, Jigudiel, and Barachiel. Each of those has at the end of them the L, which means God is something. And if you take a look at each one of those, you see that each one serves a particular liturgical function. Praise for one, judgment for another, the ambassadorial facilities of Gabriel, meeting Zacharias in the temple, meeting the mother of God to tell her that she's going to have a uh, son in Jesus Christ. Um, we have um, Tobias being accompanied by an archangel along his journeys in the Old Testament, and so on and so forth. These angels are ministers. Their job is to communicate something from God to humanity because God wants humanity to know something that really needs to be communicated through something like an angel. It literally, angel means messenger, angelos. We think, we think of the Gospels as evangelos or evangelical, the good news, the spreading of the good news or a good message. So angels serve in this capacity. They see God. They are able to minister to him. We think of the angels or the seraphim of Isaiah 6. And their job primarily is to do whatever it is that God wishes for them to do. But if we look at today's epistle, we see that humans actually have been appointed to be greater than the angels. But how can this be? Because we don't even see God clearly. Well, that's because things are not the way they're supposed to be. Instead, things are supposed to be where we keep our senses fully focused on God and we try to do the things that are well-pleasing to him. But that's not easy because in the physical world, we only see the things that are physical. So we get caught up in the worldly cares. We get caught up in all the things that are going on around us, the politics or the entertainment or whatever it is. Those things are very easy to distract us and cause us to falter. 
we need to resist such temptations. We need to do what we can to to follow after God and to see God's handiwork in everything that is around us. How can we do this? Through sustained prayer, through sustained fasting, through the forcing of ourselves to look at nature, recognize the imprint that exists there, that imprint oftentimes is the imprint of God, the lohi, as St. Maximus the Confessor would call it, that little hint of creative perfection that comes from God and gives us the desire to get closer to God because of the good things that he has done. This is our challenge because we live in a time that is so saturated with different kinds of distractions. And it's very easy to see the negative in things because left to our own devices, a lot of times we do things that are not helpful but harmful. But if we have the eyes to see, if we focus our spiritual senses like we focus our physical ones on the things that God has done, then it brings us to the desire to give thanks to God for all things whether they be good things that help make our life better or bad things that bring us to an understanding of humility and the need to care for others. There's always an opportunity to learn about how we are to minister both to God and to our fellow neighbor. And those opportunities we can see in the example of the angels. Again, angels are special. They're blessed because they have no body, no physical encumberments, but they worship God in every way that they possibly can. And we look to them through scriptures, and we look to them through the different things that have come to us throughout all the ages, and we pray that they may assist us and help us and be our companion along the way so that we can do the things that are well-pleasing to God and that ultimately we can find ourselves, again, given uh, blessing by our God that we can live with him for eternity in a place of bliss and a place of comfort. May it be so. And may God give us the eyes to see, not just the angels that are around us, but his handiwork in everything that is. Everything points to the glory of God. And may God bless and keep you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I thank you very much for joining me today. I pray you have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.